you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our worship service this morning. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Pleased to have you on this time change Sunday. Did you have any trouble this morning? Uh, uh, we, uh, the only problem for us is we have to recalibrate all of our children and friends all over the country, try to figure out what time it is when we're talking to them. And so uh, anyway, we, we survive time change Sunday. Also, this is All Saints Day for us. Um, uh, we had All Saints Day last Wednesday. It's also Day of the Dead last week for our friends from Mexico and other places. And so we're going to focus today on uh, those who have gone before us and remember those people special to us who have made such a difference in our lives. Um, we uh, want to imagine them here with us and uh, uh, remember them particularly today. Uh, it's good to have uh, Diane and Sarah back with us today, and uh, they are in a moment of grief here, days of grief, weeks of grief, months of grief, uh, as the three little boys that they were fostering uh, have gone home to their mother. So it's a very tough time for them. So uh, let's be in prayer for them today. And uh, Try not to ask them about the boys as we talk to them after the service. Uh, anyway, so uh, we have today Brian and Joyful Noise with us. Uh, it's a new rendition every time they come. We have a lot of people out of town today, and so it might be a Joyful Noise quartet or trio. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Angela is our liturgist, and Thomas is on the drums, and so thank you all for being here. Lots of anno announcements this time of year, and so I'm going to try to plow through them quickly. Uh, the mission project for this month is CCJ and Yavapai Food Bank. Uh, decorating for Christmas will take place on November 20th at 9 o'clock. So if you want to get in the Christmas spirit, uh, that'll be the 20th at 9 uh, free church calendars are outside in Perkins Hall. Christmas cards are now available to you in Perkins Hall as well. So thank you for doing that. Um, our shelter services meal is the 15th, and we will uh, start the process of signing up today. If we don't get enough people, we'll be passing it around next week. Try to get that filled in to help out uh, that, for that meal. We have education experiences still going on, our small group and our meditation. The radio play is coming up November 20th at 7. Uh, scripts are available. Uh, Brian tells me they're out here. Yeah, so if you need a script, uh, yours is out in Perkins Hall. And Friendsgiving, a new thing we're doing on the 24th, hosting a Thanksgiving day dinner and fellowship. So uh, read that and participate if you can. Uh, we have the community Thanksgiving service coming up November 16th uh, at the uh, LDS church here in town. So uh, I apologize I had to make it so small. You need to take it home and uh, try to figure out what it says. But I'll, I'll blow it up for next week so you'll be able to see it. Um, and I think that's all I had other than to say that we are in the middle of our stewardship campaign we have the envelopes back there in our box with your name on it if you haven't received it yet. And we have our uh, estimate of giving form that's available too. We do this as the bulletin insert will suggest to try to figure out uh, what to plan for next year and uh, what to have. And so help us out with that if you can. Okay, well, that was a lot. And now we come to a very exciting time in the life of the church where we welcome new members. So I'm going to ask uh, all who are joining to join me up front. In recent uh, time, we have tried our best to make joining the church uh, easy, try to take away all of the barriers and obstacles that some churches put up to try to, you would think they would want to uh, and, you know, welcome people and enjoy having them, but they make it hard. So we try to make it very easy. And so uh, joining us today, we have Robin, who's uh, 
got her uh, testimony in your bulletin insert for you to read. A uh, wonderful testimony that really speaks to what this church is all about. Uh, she came in and found this to be a very welcoming place and uh, has been with us now for two or three months or maybe more than that. <laughs> yeah, so welcome to you. And she's already taking part, so she's already really a member. We're just uh, validating that today. And so we welcome you. And we have uh, Colin and uh, Hiruze, Maya, and Kiana who are joining us. They're really coming in as uh, transfer of membership, really, because they're part, they were part of uh, the Congregational Church out in Irvine. And that's where the children were baptized, uh, Maya and Kiana. And they are uh, already involved, um, straight-A students and their school. So uh, get to know them. They are twins and uh, very, uh, very good young people. And so welcome to you. Glad to have you joining us. Uh, Firuze comes to us as uh, a computer person. Uh, also Colin. You know, I, whenever I talk to my son on the phone, I ask him what he's doing. He's a programmer. And by the time he's done, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> so ask them what they do. You know, they... He's at Boeing, she does some sort of consulting out from uh, uh, Orange County, and so uh, it'd be interesting to probably hear what it is they do every day. For <laughs> but uh, welcome to you. It's good to have you with us, and uh, uh, what a treat for us to welcome you to our town of Prescott. Okay, so two questions to ask. Uh, first question is, uh, do you wish to follow us in the way of Jesus of God? Yes? yes? And will you be a faithful member of this church as you have opportunity to use your gifts and talents here in the life of this congregation? Uh, will you? All right. Well, that's it. <laughs> no secret handshake. No, you know. <laughs> So we're going to have uh, the passing of the peace in a moment and your chance to greet them. And so let us pray. Thank you, God, for these who are joining with us today. Thank you that you brought them our way. They are gifts to us, and may we now be a gift to them in terms of blessing and fellowship and family. We pray through Christ. Amen. All right, let us stand and greet one another with the peace of Christ. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome to you. Thank you so much. And I'm just going to look at you. I'll look at you, Brian. Jay?
find ourselves talking. I'm going to need a box to stand. If you guys want to clap, here we go. When the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in. Thank you. <clears throat> well, good to have you with us. Uh, we think our children are saints, so uh, you are all very special to us. And I don't know what's going on up here today. Um, we seem to have JJ with us. Yeah, so I'm going to let him come over here. I don't know what happened to Ziggy. Do you, do you know what happened to Ziggy? Yeah. <laughs> He's either in the trash or they're playing hide and seek. I don't know. Uh, yes. Is he getting kidnapped? He's getting kidnapped. <laughs> well, let's see what's going on in here. Ziggy, are you down there? Yeah, I am. Oh, okay. Well, there you are. Huh? I could hardly breathe in there. <laughs> okay. Now, what were you doing in that trash bag? Well, it's All Saints Sunday, and I was actually saved from the furnace room by St. Tom. <laughs> Thank you, St. Tom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you don't know the story, uh, I needed somebody to go with... Uh, JJ, and so Tom was in the furnace room and looked in a garbage bag, and there was uh, Ziggy. <laughs> so so uh, I don't know how long he was in there. He might have been in there for years, for all we know. So, uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Well, that's a fun little story, but it reminds us of how... People are very important to us, and they help us through life, and sometimes they're like saints to us, right? They, they help us when we need the help, and so today, we are going to have communion and remember those that are important to us that maybe are no longer with us on this earth, and people that have been very important to you, and so... As we take the bread and the cup today, we remember Jesus and all Jesus did for us, but we also remember those who were special in our lives. So I'm going to offer you the bread of heaven. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is my kingdom. And so we make a very special effort here to include the children in our communion time. And we remember the cup of salvation today as well. And in the miracle of only God could do, we have yet to have any spills.
So these are the gifts of God for you to remind us how much God loves us and how important you are as saints to God. Let's commune together. Thank you, God, for our boys and girls, our teachers. Bless them this day. May they remember today those who perhaps are part of their lives who are no longer with us, uh, but they can remember them today and give thanks to you for them. We give thanks for our children through Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. A whole pewful today. <laughs> well, you're welcome to go downstairs now. As they're going down, let's sing one more time. Oh, when the saints are marching in. Join me in the call to worship. Sovereign of creation, all that we have comes from you. When we turned away, you called us home and patiently waited our return. We gather in your presence, surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, people from every tribe and nation, every kindred and tongue, to lift our voices in praise, to be transformed into your saints, to be sent out to gather others, to share your grace and love. Hear the praise we offer, work in us and through us. And would you now, uh, if you're able, please stand and we will sing for all the saints. It's in the New Century Hymnal 299.
Please be seated. This morning's gospel reading is from Matthew 23, verses 1 through 12. Now Jesus turned to address his disciples, along with the crowd that had gathered, gathered with them. And he said, The religion scholars and Pharisees are competent teachers in God's law. You won't go wrong in following their teachings on Moses, but be careful about following them. They talk a good line, but they don't live it. They don't take it into their hearts and live it out in their behavior. It's all spit and polish veneer. Instead of giving you God's law as food and drink by which you can banquet on God, they package it in bundles of rules, loading you down like pack animals. They seem to take pleasure in watching you stagger under these loads and wouldn't think of lifting a finger to help. Their lives are perpetual fashion shows, embroidered prayer shawls one day and flowery prayers the next. They love to sit at the head table at church dinners, basking in the most prominent positions, preening in the radiance of public flattery, receiving honorary degrees, and getting called doctor and reverend. Don't let people do that to you, put you on a pedestal like that. You all have a single teacher, and you are all classmates. Don't set people up as experts over your life, letting them tell you what to do. Save the authority for God. Let him tell you what to do. No one else should carry the title of father. You have only one father, and he's in heaven. And don't let people maneuver you into taking charge of them. There is only one life leader for you and them, Christ. Do you want to stand out? Then step down. Be a servant. If you puff yourself up, you'll get the wind knocked out of you. But if you're content to simply be yourself, your life will count for plenty. Thank you. Humans are good at messing things up. <clears throat> Can I get an amen to that? No. no. <laughs> Whatever it is, humans will mess it up. Whether it's the environment, whether it's the Middle East, whether it's politics, whether it's our own lives, we're really good at messing things up. And we also mess up religion. Well, this morning I want to begin with uh, how we messed up something very simple that God gave us. And it's a humorous sort of story, but I want to use it because it'll lead right into how we mess up religion. And it relates to that thing we call grass. How have you had a grass lawn? I was reflecting this week on how I had to spend an hour or two every week mowing this big grass lawn at our house while our young children and teenage children stayed in their room looking at screens. So I don't know who used this big expanse of grass other than the dog, <laughs> some other creatures that came through, but that was it but yet I spent all that time on it. So here we go. This is an imaginary discussion between God and St. Francis. Francis, you know all about gardens and nature. What in the world is going down, on down there on the earth? What happened to the dandelions, the violets, the thistle, and stuff I started eons ago? I had a perfect no-maintenance garden plan. Those plants grow in any type of soil, withstand drought, and multiply with abandon. The nectar from the long-lasting blossoms attracts butterflies, honeybees, and flocks of songbirds. I expected to see a vast garden of colors by now, 
but all I see is these green rectangles. It's the tribe that settled there, Lord, the suburbanites. They started calling your flowers weeds and went to great extent to kill them and replace them with grass. Grass? But it's so boring. It's not colorful. It doesn't attract butterflies, birds, and bees, only grubs and sodworms. It's temperamental with temperatures. Do these suburbanites really want all that grass growing there? Apparently so, Lord. They go to such great pains to grow it and keep it green. They begin each spring by fertilizing grass and poisoning any other plant that crops up on the lawn. The spring rains and cool weather probably make grass grow really fast. That must make the suburbanites happy. Apparently not, Lord. As soon as it grows a little, they cut it, sometimes twice a week. They cut it. Do they then bale it like hay? Not exactly, Lord. Most of them rake it up and put it in bags. They bag it? Why? Is it a cash crop? Do they, do, do they sell it? No, sir, just the opposite. They pay to throw it away. <laughs> now, let me get this straight. They fertilize it so it will grow, and when it does grow, they cut it and pay to have it thrown away. Yes, sir. These suburbanites must be relieved in the summer when we cut back on the rain and turn up the heat. That surely slows the growth and saves them a lot of work. You aren't going to believe this, Lord. When the grass stops growing so fast, they drag out hoses and pay more money to water it so that they continue to mow it and pay to get rid of it. What nonsense! At least they kept some of the trees. That was a great stroke of genius on my part, if I do say so myself. The trees grow leaves in the spring to provide beauty and shade in the summer. In the autumn, they fall to the ground and form a natural blanket to keep moisture in the soil and protect the trees and bushes. Plus, as they rot, the leaves form compost to enhance the soil. It's a natural circle of life. You better sit down, Lord. <clears throat> the suburbanites, <laughs> as soon as the leaves fall, they rake them into great piles and have them hauled away. No. What do they do to protect the shrub and tree roots in the winter and keep the soil moist and loose? After, after throwing away your leaves, they go out and buy something they call mulch. They haul it home and spread it around in place of the leaves. And where do they get this mulch? They cut down trees and grind them up. <laughs> enough! I've heard enough. I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> Humans can mess anything up. <laughs> and so I want you to imagine with me today, and based on our reading, this conversation between God and one of the angels. So, how are the humans doing down there? You know, I made it really simple for them. I gave them two commands, right? Love God and love your neighbor. So how are they doing? Well, not so well, Lord. Um, there's a lot of trouble with that. What do you mean? Well, Jesus is having to deal with those religious leaders right now. Uh, they're called the Pharisees. And who are they? Well, they're kind of like an HOA. <clears throat> an HOA? Yeah, you know, an HOA starts off with a really good uh, purpose, you know, to try to keep the community looking good, and, uh, but they just can't stop there. They have to add rules and rules and rules and regulations until in the end you can't even go out in your yard and do anything. Wow, so that's what these religious leaders are doing? That's right, Lord. Jesus is having to deal with them right now and try to get them under control. Uh, so what did they do with that wonderful thing I gave them, that gift of the Sabbath? Well, you're not going to believe it, Lord. Uh, you meant it to be a real gift to them of rest and relaxation. Uh, well, they took that and added a bunch of rules and regulations to it. Matter of fact, 
In New York City, you have to have Shabbat elevators. What is a Shabbat elevator? It's an elevator that stops on every floor so you don't have to hit the button. <laughs> what would be wrong with hitting the button? That would be working. They're not supposed to work on this half. Oh, my goodness. I gave this as a gift, and they've turned it into this burdensome thing. That's right, Lord. That's what those people have done with all of the faith and your teachings you gave them. And religion has now become a major burden. Well, what am I going to do? Gosh, they have messed it up. Yes, Lord, may I remind you, these people you made mess everything up. <laughs> Humans will mess it up, even religion. And we could go on and on with examples of how They've taken this thing of the faith, love God, love your neighbor, and made it into uh, everything else but that by the end of the day. Well, maybe we can have some humility here today, and I've entitled the sermon Humble Saints, because in the end, that's really all we got. We have humble saints because all of us have messed it up in one way or the other, and so what I want to do for the f uh, next few minutes is uh, reflect with you on what a blessing it has been for me this week to remember those who have made an impact on my life. They weren't uh, given special titles as Jesus warns here. They were just simple, ordinary people. But I remembered them this week. And I want you to do the same in these moments ahead. As I share these with you, think about who's in your own balcony of saints and what they have meant to you. I started off by remembering a Chinese member of my church out in California. Wonderful woman. As a little girl, she was the one who gave President Nixon the flower when he got off the plane, that original visit that he made to China. Imagine that. Uh, she was standing there right before me and Sure enough, I went and looked at the picture again to reflect on that and remember uh, that uh, she was now in the church uh, all those years later. I remember a Japanese member of my church who was in an internment camp as a child when we, you know, had to round up all the Japanese because they were all out to get us, I guess. And so she spent her early years in an internment camp out in California. I don't know what's going on on college campuses. I, I thought college students had uh, critical thinking. You know, they could differentiate between people and who's bad and who's good and not be against a complete race of people or uh, people from a certain country. And so here I've got a, a Chinese member who's wonderful, a Japanese member who's wonderful, a Iran member who's wonderful, <laughs> and our Jewish friends are wonderful in town. We, we have all these connections, and yet people want to lump everybody together and uh, shout at them and say awful things about them, and uh, I don't know. I, I'm remembering today those who have been special to me. I had a teenage member of a church in Tennessee who uh, I went to visit in uh, St. Jude Hospital. Uh, wonderful young woman, great attitude. Uh, I went to visit her, and you know, you come away from there thinking, you know, why do I deserve anything? I mean, she deserves her life, and uh, later I did her funeral, and I still think about her today uh, as a saint, someone who uh, did the best life with what she got, and I'm, I'm hoping that she's uh, now among the balcony of the saints. I had an organist in Pueblo, Colorado, who had been there 20 years. He was a retired police officer and a gay man. And this is in the year 2000, so, uh, you know, before the more recent time where we were more accepting, but wonderful guy. Uh, what a, a combination of a police officer, a gay man, and an organist all wrapped into one. And uh, I still remember him sometimes, how wonderful he was. 
Nancy was the pianist there at that church. She died way too early at 56. He was a dispatcher for the police department. And uh, when I did her funeral, I, I was able to tell her children and grand grandchildren that I don't know that I've met a more uh, perfect human being, somebody who just, uh, anyway, I, I just was so impressed by her and so I remember Nancy today. I had a uh, blind retired colonel in my church one time. I still think of him sometimes. He called me the chaplain. <laughs> Hello, chaplain, how are you today? And uh, he still brings uh, a smile to my face when I think about him. Since we're in uh, stewardship season, I remember today going to the mailbox at my church, getting the mail, and opening the letter that said, many, many years ago, uh, somebody left you some bank stock. That bank has now been sold to another bank, and so the stock has to be dissolved. And so here's a check for $325,000. I still remember that day. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, a lot of ways that uh, you can be remembered uh, in this life. Well, what I want to do now is uh, remember the three that uh, we have lost this past year. Uh, Marty Dial. Marty's daughter is here up front. Marty would always sit right there. And uh, I still remember, you know, going to different... Uh, I can't ever remember the name of where she played at the... Mar Margaret T. Morris. So the first time I had to go to Margaret T. Morris to visit one of our members, I, I get in there and I look over and I say, is that Marty? And she's probably, I don't know, late 80s, maybe 90s, and she's over there uh, playing the piano. That was her volunteer work, and she did that at the hospital. You sometimes go in the hospital, there she'd be playing. Uh, but a wonderful person that uh, always had a twinkle in her eye, and we're going to say today what she always said in her memory and honor, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. What a wonderful uh, person to get to know and have in our church family, and so we remember her today. Jane Osborne. When I got here in 2015, she was the music director, and uh, in the years ahead, we journeyed with her through cancer and cancer treatments, uh, she lost her hair, yet she would still come and uh, lead the choir. Um, as I said at her service, uh, every month we would do a service at Las Fuentes Rest Home, or not Rest Home, uh, Las Fuentes Home, we'll just say. And uh, we would go at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. And after she was here all morning, uh, she would come back at 3 and lead the music. And uh, what an amazing thing. After working all week at uh, the VA, and so um, God bless her. We remember her today and all of her faithful service to this church. And John Huff. Uh, John was uh, part of the care for the building through a lot of years. Uh, he gave us his uh, trailer that we used in the parades. You know, we would have floats in the parades. And standing up here today, John was part of redoing this chancel. If you haven't been here a long time, if you can imagine, we used to have pews that were actually attached to the floor back here. And so you couldn't really do much back there. You couldn't move around, or move chairs. And so they made that happen, John and his uh, friends. And so I want to uh, remember him today for that. Hebrews chapter 12, after the faith chapter, which is chapter 11, that recounts to us all the great people of faith down through the Bible, begins chapter 12 with these words. Let us now run the race that is before us, remembering those who have gone before us. They inspire us, they help us, and so I hope in these moments you have thought of those people that are in your balcony who have made a difference in your life. Amen.
as we come to this invitation to communion and remembrance of the saints, I'm going to uh, change the program a little bit. I've got some bold print there, but if we do that, that will keep us from being able to remember each person. And so please ignore the bold print and don't say anything. <laughs> Just listen and reflect, and uh, we will now do this tradition that we do every year. And thanks to Reverend Bill for coming uh, to ring the bell as we mention each name today. And there's also a time for all of you to remember those that are special for you. The invitation is simple. Come and eat of the feast. Not a meal to nourish the body, but to feed the soul. We receive the bread and wine connected to the ages. To the saint of old who felt unworthy. To the seeker eager to know God to the teenager who wonders what it's all about, to the child who eats with unburdened faith, woven into this time the hopes and tears of generations. There is great joy here. No one is turned away, for God is the host. Open yourself to the nudging God, tender, transforming God. You have invited us to gather at this table to taste the feast the same abundant promises offered to our ancestors in faith. For the one this meal remembers, the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we remember. We remember those who have died in the past year. Marty Dial. John Huff. And Jane Osborne. We celebrate their lives even as we continue to grieve. And today we dedicate an offering plate to Marilyn Eby's memory for her many years of faithful service in taking up the offering with husband Jay. And we remember all those who have gone before us. God of all, send your spirit to this place so that those gathered here in this sacred moment may know your presence. As we eat the bread and drink of the cup, make us one with the saints. This is the feast prepared for you. We come now to the Lord's table. I'll ask our helpers to come at this time. We're practicing uh, communion by intinction today, which simply means you'll come up the middle aisle, receive the elements, and go back on the side aisle. And in the back section, Tom will be serving back there.
bread of heaven, the cup of salvation. Bread of heaven, the cup of salvation for you. Bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Bread of heaven and the cup of salvation for you. Bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. heaven and the cup of salvation for you, Jesus. Mm. Bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Bread of heaven and the cup of salvation for you. Bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Heaven and the cup of salvation for you. Bread of heaven and the cup of salvation for you. for this time to be able to join together in communion. Help us to remember and reflect on all those who have gone before us, those in our balcony of saints who have meant so much, and having been fed at this table, send us forth to be that saint for someone else. Through Christ we pray, amen.
ask uh, Andy and Morgan, Wyatt, and Winnie, or just you two today? Okay. <laughs> Uh, what a blessing this family has been to us, and we appreciate them coming and doing the Stewardship Minute today. All right, Stewardship Minute. Um, <clears throat> I guess I was reflecting uh, a few minutes ago when Jay asked us to, uh, about why um, we contribute to this community and this church. And um, I think I'm going to ask for my theme is going to be to be a little bit selfish um, when thinking about why we contribute. And there's a lot of opportunities here at this church, whether to serve with your time, your talents, or your treasure. And if you don't find something that is enriching you while you're serving others, then you're probably not going to do that service quite as well. And so that's why I don't sing in the choir. I don't like that. I like to run the video. And so that keeps me committed because I like to do it. Um, so just take a little bit of time and think about the opportunities that are here. And there are many. And there are many that are enriching. Um, the Spanish class, the meditation class, et cetera. Um, think about what benefit you get from serving and contributing to this community and the larger community and focus your time because your resources are limited on those that that make you happy and, and feel good about your contribution so uh, i was thinking about all the reasons why our family enjoys being a part of this church so i wrote some things down and <laughs> hopefully it doesn't take up it might not be a minute it might be two um, but we really do enjoy being part of such an open and welcoming and supportive church family. Um, Pastor Jay does a wonderful job of bringing lessons from the Bible into our everyday lives. He shares his knowledge and years of experience with us by weaving passages and parables from the Bible with other interesting and applicable resources. He's building a theme for each week. He provides us with a fresh perspective and supportive guidance, encouraging us to approach our week through a new lens and to be open to the many possible ways of seeing God and being Christ-like in our everyday experiences. So that's something I really appreciate. Thank you. Um, in this place, we don't ever feel condemned or ashamed or constrained, but instead we feel loved and supported and encouraged. Um, that's why we're happy to be a part of this community. Our children have an extended family here where they feel included and supported by so many people. It's a place where they can learn about Jesus, they can share their gifts and talents, and they can build relationships with so many wonderful people. They feel welcome and they're reminded often of that they're an important part of this community just like each and every one of you are. Um, so when I ask them what they enjoy the most, because they're downstairs enjoying Sunday school right now, I'll speak on their behalf. They said they love lighting the candles, they love Sunday school, they love snack time, which we call fellowship, and vacation Bible school. So I personally enjoy all the music opportunities I have here to sing and ring. Um, and I also appreciate the important, uh, like the... Uh, availability of opportunities. So I appreciate that you have, if you have an interest in participating in something here that's already existing, you're welcome to join in at any point. Um, also, if you have the idea to create something new, like a group or an event or a committee, you're free and encouraged to do that. Um, for instance, a few weeks ago, we started up a meditation group that meets once a week, and we're following a text um, as the basis for our discussion and meditation practice, and we've enjoyed sharing this experience together. Our group has had the chance to practice various forms of meditation, breathing, sitting, listening, walking. It's been very interesting. And we're realizing the benefits of allowing and encouraging ourselves to take a pause from our busy lives and just to be in the moment. So in order to share that with you today, I asked Pastor Jay if we can take a five-minute silent time together during the prayer today for stillness, prayer, reflection. We don't often take silent time, so, so just allow it it's allow yourself to do that um and so by allowing ourselves to, the more opportunities that are not filled with activity we can allow the dust to settle and possibly be more open to god's presence and to what we're being called to do and to be so thank you very much and uh 
Wyatt and Winnie uh, mean so much to us too. Uh, as uh, if you're visiting with us, we've watched them grow and be able to light the candles uh, as they were started, like right down here somewhere. And so it's been a wonderful time. So um, where is St. Tom? Uh, oh, there's St. Tom. So St. Tom always keeps track of the uh, length of the service every week. And so we're going to go over a little bit today. But, but he's told me in the past that I gained time some weeks, right? We didn't quite go an hour. So I think I have time. So we're, uh, we'll, we'll do, uh, you want to do two or three minutes? Or? Three. All right. So uh, in honor of our meditation group, we're going to uh, include three minutes of silent time, which is uh, very strange, I think, for all of us to experience. But it's good for us. Because on this day, when we remember the saints, a uh, chance for you to commune uh, with God and think about that. And so we're going to take this time to do that. And so uh, let us join together in this time of meditation. And now we lift up to you, O oh God, our requests we all bring today. We share them silently with you, and we pray particularly today for Elena, who is now home. We praise God for that and continue her development and healing. And we pray for Bard today, Linda's husband, who is in Phoenix for surgery tomorrow, a member of our uh, Jewish temple in town and often visits here too and so we pray for healing there as well and we pray for our world and for peace to come to this planet we pray through Christ who taught us to pray saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to our morning offering. And uh, just want to... Remember again the special offering plate that we've had engraved for, with Marilyn's 
name on it. Uh, Marilyn and Jay took up the offering here for 40 years, 30 years, I don't know. Every week uh, they would come down together and uh, it was just really a tradition here. And so we remember Marilyn today with this offering plate. Let us receive our morning offering. join me in the prayer of dedication. God, we thank you for this place we have to worship you. We so easily take for granted the church building, the members who keep things clean and who keep things going, the lights and plumbing and all the other things it takes to hold our worship services each week. Help us to realize that while it may not be what we consider to be an exciting cause, it is one that is important to your cause. Bless the offering. Amen. Join me in the last hymn in the New Century Hymnal no, number 295. I sing a song of the saints of God.
Thank you for joining us today. We invite you next door to Perkins Hall for a time of fellowship and food and refreshments. And again, may you go forth to be the saints of God, to share the love of Christ and the love of God with others. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. Amen.